sanctuary. Uh, to those of you who are uh, at home and uh, worshiping with us on uh, Facebook, welcome, welcome. Uh, as you are finding us, um, feel free. As a matter of fact, we ask you to share, uh, start your own watch party. But God has been good to us, hasn't he? I, I know the answer to that already. He watched over us last night. He's kept us all through the week. We have so much to be thankful for. So much to be grateful for. Yes, we do. I like that song that says, if he doesn't do anything else for me, it doesn't matter because he's already done enough. And so I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Thanksgiving is on my mind. Giving him praise is on my mind. But worship more than anything else. Just because of who he is. Not because of anything he's done. Just because of who he is. When you woke up this morning and you opened your eyes and you could see that you were witnessing another day. Just because of who he is. If you were able to swing your legs out of the bed this morning and touch the Lord. Just because of who he is. When you look back over your life, you wonder how you made it this far just because of who he is. Glory to God. So, on uh, today, if you have your finest, if you enter into this worship service with us, glory to God. Don't hold anything back. Don't hold anything back. You, you at home, if you're at home, and you can be comfortable at home, but you give him the best praise that you've got. Blessed be the name of the Lord this morning. It doesn't stop, but we're not going to stop. Oh, we're not going to stop. The song says something, but I want you to know I know who he is. The song says something, but I know you know who he is. This morning in this song, we're going to identify him for who he is. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on. If you have strength in the middle this morning, you ought to stand up on your feet. No matter where you are, by YouTube and Facebook, and give God glory. Perhaps your neighbors need to hear you this morning. Perhaps somebody in the highway and the byway needs to know you this in the name of the Lord. Come on, y'all join me with me. Thank you, Lord. There's something inside of me. You know.
teaching this morning. The scripture will be found in the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, starting at verse 1. And it reads, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life free. I read to you out of Revelation 21st chapter, the first through the seventh verse. And as we move on with our worship service today, Father, I want to offer thanks to you. I come to you offering thanks, Father. As humble as I know how, Father, I speak the words that you give me. And I speak for us all. And Father, I want to say thank you for your grace and your mercy. Your magnificent and wonderful being, Father. We thank you for all that you do and doing and are going to do for us, Father. And first, we thank you for the love that you had for us before we had it for ourselves. Father, we want to continue to uplift you, to praise you, and to give you thanks. We can't thank you enough. And Father, in times like these, we need you more than ever, Father. We need you to send your Holy Spirit to guide us, to instruct us to keep us, to lead us, to direct us, Father, and to comfort us, and to keep us. Father, I constantly ask for the young and the old. Father, we need you like no other time before. Father, we need the direction. We need your guidance. And we need the love that you poured on us. Father, we stand on your word. We stand on your promises. Those promises that say that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, and for those things we give you honor and glory and praise, and we thank you again. I can't thank you enough. Father, and as we assemble today, I pray that you would touch every family that's represented in the sound of my voice, Father. Bless us, Father. Let us know that you are God. You are magnificent. There is no honor like you. Father, we can't do anything without you. Father, during this pandemic season, Father, we know that it's for a season. And during this season, Father, we pray that you will cover us. To keep us in your care, in your will, in your way, in your word. And let us know, depending on you, is the way that we should go, Father. And I pray that you will bless these young families, Father. Bless the young families, Father. Show them how to depend on you. They don't have the experiences yet, Father. But cover them with blood. The blood that will allow them to lean and depend on you and rely on you, Father, for their daily bread. And Father, I pray that you bless your church. Bless this church and the, the leader that you've put in for us, Father, this Father. Bless him and his family. Strengthen them. Keep them lifted in your word, Father, in the deep treasures of it. And Father, I pray that you will forever and forever and forever send your Holy Spirit to God. These things I ask in your mighty son, in Jesus' name. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. 
Good morning. God is good. Isn't he good? God is good. Yes, he is. You know, there's a song that our interpretive dancers would bless the house with on many Sundays. And I'm going to ask if you would worship with us on this song this morning. As we sing about who God is, he's the king of glory. Am I right? He's the king of glory.
And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. And I'm just going to use as a subject this morning a new start. A new, a new start. Has anyone ever felt like you needed a new start? Amen. You, you've, been, you've been going through the day. Uh, you got up early in the morning and started on your way to work. And you got pulled over and you got a, a ticket. And, oh, you forgot your wallet and you just wish you could just start over. Have you ever gotten yourself in, 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 in such deep of a mess that you just prayed that you had the opportunity to start over? Amen. You know, you and I have a lot in common uh, with Jacob. In fact, we have a lot of Jacob in us, if we just be honest. See, see, we've all had some stuff uh, that we had to deal with. See, none of us are perfect. And none of us were born perfect. And we all have a history. We all have a past. And the bad thing about it, some of us are still living in the past. Some of us relive our history every day. Somebody is still holding on to their bad history this morning. A, a new start. It, 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 some folks have, have allowed their history, because they keep holding on to it, to define their future. You know, we've all prayed and, 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 and should be praying that God would give us a turnaround experience. New life. A new start. Somebody say new start. Well, let's, let's look at Jacob's life. He stole his brother's birthright and his brother's blessing. Jacob's very name means supplanter or trickster. He's been a deceiver all of his life. Y'all know anybody like that? Amen. I, I, I know you do. He, you can't trust him. You never could trust them, really. They're always in, always in trouble. Always up to, up to something. There's been a bad cloud over them all of their, their life. You know, my brothers and my sisters, you can't point to Jacob's upbringing and say that he was victim of a bad childhood. You know, sometimes we say the person is like that because they, they had bad experiences coming up. They, they come from a broken home. Uh, you, you can't say that about Jacob. He was from a good family. You know, his dad was one of the most famous men in, in history. I mean, who doesn't know about Abraham? Yes, sir. Uh, God called Abraham his grandfather. God called him his friend. Yes, you know, and you probably could say that Jacob grew up in the church because you, you can imagine that, that, that Abraham and, and, and Isaac were always talking about just how, how good God was. Can you imagine? I, I remember that, that, that time that time, you know, when I was what was going up on you know, Mount Moriah and there was a ram in the bush. Can't you just remember them retelling the, the stories all the, all of the time? But, but all I'm saying is, let's not try to figure out why Jacob uh, ends up where he is or why he's like he is. But, but I suggest that we focus not on, on, on how he got to where he is, but I, I, I suggest that we focus on what he was trying to do. And that's get him started. And I'm suggesting that you not focus on your past, where you've been, even where you are right now, but focus on a new start. Amen. Let's look at how, how Jacob is handling this situation. 
Uh, uh, let's go with Genesis, the 32nd chapter, uh, the 9th through the 11th verses. And, and Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who has said it unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. He has a promise. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies. I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm, I've done some stuff wrong. I'm not worthy. And of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant, for with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. See, in, in Jacob's mind, he is facing a desperate and hopeless situation. We find him praying. That's what he's doing. He, he finds himself in a hopeless situation and he is praying and seeking the Lord's deliverance. He had no hope other than to cry out to God. Has anybody ever been there? You got yourself in a situation. You tried to handle it. And while you was handling it, it kept getting worse. And you couldn't do anything else but pray. You didn't have anybody or anything to turn to. Jacob reminds the Lord of his word. Lord, you told me to return to my country. And that if I did, everything would be well with me. You know, sometimes it's just good to repeat back God's word in your prayer. Yes. Know what I'm talking about? Yes. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, I, I'm the, the head and not the tail. Uh, the Jacob admitted that, that, that he once had nothing. But now he got more than he needs. But he admits that he's unworthy. Now, and now, whatever the problem is, uh, uh, Jacob shows us that, that the first answer to solving the problem is to kneel down and pray. That the prayer is the first thing that we should do, not the last. Prayer will either help us solve the problem or strengthen us to walk through the situation. Uh, let's, let's, let's be honest. Uh, uh, sometimes our problems, our situations, our circumstances seem to be more than we can bear. Y'all looking at me fun. Problems with our husband or with our wife. Problem with our children. They used to say no when it was cute. Yeah. Now they say no when you want to talk. <laughs> Problems with our friends. They used to be so close. And now you wish you could be so far away. Problem on the job. Problems with our finances. You know, life presents one crisis after another. And, and they really are more than we can handle on our own. That's right. Death, accident, yes. disease, yes. suffering, pain. And, and when they hit us, not only should we pray, but you know, it requires a all by myself kind of prayer. Because you can't concentrate with a lot of people around you. God wants your full attention. 
He wants us alone so that we can concentrate fully upon him and our need. Jesus gives us that example, Matthew the 14th chapter and the 23rd verse. He says, when he had sent the multitudes away, man, he's getting people away from around him. So he went up into the mountain. Not only did he get, they get them away from him, but he went to a place where he knew they wouldn't follow him. He went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, there he was all alone, ready to pray. Uh, the text says that Jacob was left alone and he wrestled with a man. Now, here's your note. Not only was Jacob wrestling with a man, but, but Jacob was wrestling with some unfinished business. Jacob, Jacob had a calling on his life, but, but he couldn't walk in his destiny in his current state. See, you two have a, you two have a work to do. There, there's a calling on, on your life. And so you ought to take inventory. God wants to use you. And, and, and you know what? He has a collective work for St. Luke. Yes, yes, he's allowed us to get where we are today. And, and we're poised. And, and we're, we're, we're positioned. But we're not on the battlefield. We just looking at it. But and, and here's the thing: God can't use you, can't use us in the state that we're in. We're not fit. You didn't pass the interest exam. You can't even get past the physical. We're in need of a new stop. Jacob had an encounter with God. And then Jacob says he saw him face to face. Uh, uh, Jacob realized, and that's a lot of our problems, but Jacob realized that, that his life was in disarray. And only God could do what needed to be done. Some of us still have a list of things that we still got to try first. But, but, but Jacob realized that He'd already done what he could do, and only God could get him out of the mess. And, and so Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Now, Jacob had an experience with blessings. And see, you and I have an experience with blessings. Jacob remembered what happened when his uh, father laid his hands on him and, and he knows that he needed a life change. He, he didn't know what to call it but a blessing. Uh, he had had a natural blessing but now he has the opportunity for a spiritual blessing. I will be hearing me. And so he won't, he won't let go. He won't give up and he won't give in. He, he's come to that point in his life. And how many of you come to that point in your life? That, that it is not about material things. That, that material things won't fill the void in your life. That, that you need not a, a material blessing, but you need a spiritual blessing. I mean, has anyone ever been there that the life was so big? Uh, that, that, that you could be heard saying that, that you wouldn't stop praying until God moved on your behalf. Glory. You, you were sick and you realized that the doctor had done everything they could do. And, and, and so you begin to call on the name of the Lord. And you didn't quit until he moved. Uh, that they, they looked when you went back and they couldn't find what they thought they saw. Your finances were just destroyed. Anybody know what that means? Your finances were destroyed. You used the credit card. And then they said, do you have another? They asked you, where was your car? 
He said it was in the shop. Knowing full well somebody came and picked it up. You lost everything that you had, including your dignity. And prayer was all that you had. And, and now, and now, even you are surprised at how God has restored what you lost. Glory to God. Anybody ever lost a job? You, you lost a job. And to this day, you don't know what happened. But you do know that God answers prayer. You got a new job now. And you like this job better. The, the other job interferes with your life. It, this job enhances your life. And then, and, and then all of that, you never missed a meal. And, and, in fact, in the process, you learn how to do more with less. Even now, you make less money, but you got more. And you enjoy life more. Because now you got time to spend with God. He walked away from you. She said she didn't want you no more. You cried. You didn't know which way to turn. You thought about taking your own life. You didn't think that you would ever smile again. And now you can't stop smiling. You had somebody, but you were still by yourself. You had somebody, but you were still lonesome. And now with God, you're never alone. Jacob, Jacob is saying, I won't let you go until you bless me. And, 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 and we have to be careful because you know there's, there's, there's somebody always watching. D doesn't, doesn't he know who he's talking to? Because, because based on his life, where he's been, he got no business expecting anything from God. You see, that, that's, that's why you need to get by yourself. Because people will talk you out of asking God for what you want. People are good at reasoning uh, why you can't have something. Letting you know how, how bad it looks, how bad things look. But the, the angel asked Jacob what was his name. He changed Jacob's name to Israel. And he said, for you have struggled with God and me. And you have prevailed. I thank you, Jesus. Ah, I thank you, Holy Ghost. You see, he didn't just change Jacob's name. But he changed his very character. He changed it from ugly to beautiful. He changed Jacob from being disgraceful to being honorable. He changed Jacob. He removed corruption and contempt and he replaced it with purity he moved misery and he put in comfort and consolation God took away the fear and he replaced it with assurance blessed assurance he changed he took away bondage and he replaced it with liberty. Jacob was looking for a blessing to his master life. But God gave him a new life. God gave him a new start. Has anybody been changed? I said, Heavenly Body, you've changed. 
you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and the angels, the angels in heaven, the sign your name, your priorities change, your goals and your purpose change, your dislikes and your likes change, your feelings and your attitudes change, your habits and your lifestyle change. I can hear somebody wondering, well, they need a change. I thank you, Jesus. I thank your Holy Ghost. Allow me to help you out. You need a change. Talking about a new start. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because the wages of sin is death. Because if you don't change, you head into hell. Jacob wanted a blessing, but he got more than he bargained for. He wanted a touch, but the angels balled up his fists and he struck Jacob. He struck him on the hill and he knocked his hill battles by him. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. And Jacob lived for the rest of his life. I, I can see Jacob living toward Esau. In my Holy Ghost mind, I can hear Esau saying, and Jacob got close to it. I know that's my brother, but I know he's been changed. He don't walk like he used to walk. There's something different, even in his voice. He don't talk like he used to talk. He used to be arrogant, but I just the spirit of humility. That's a new Jacob. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Saint Luther, we need a new start. God has seen our ministry. He looked down on us. He seen the things that we've done. Hallelujah. But he wants us. He wants us to see his ministry. Hallelujah. God is looking for a church that will come together in worship. God is looking for a church that will come together in prayer. God is looking for a church that will get down on its knees and not just pray for each other, but pray for a dying world. for a church where the glory of the Lord fills the place. God is looking for a church that can open the windows of heaven. God is looking for a church that can close the gates of hell. I'm talking about a new start. Yeah. 
destroying. And so God, I pray now, you know who they are. You know where they are. And so I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you would hear their, hear their cry, that you would, that you would hear their, their moan. And they're crying out forgiveness. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for what you did on the cross. And because of what you did on the cross, and your word, your word that says that, that if you would just ask for forgiveness, just ask for forgiveness, that, that you were faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you didn't make that plea to just a few. You said to whosoever. Whosoever. There's some people on the, the sound of my voice who fall in that category of whosoever. God, I pray now that they, they've heard you. And that they're crying out to you wherever they are. And I pray and I thank you because you're a God that cannot lie. I thank you for hearing them. I thank you for blessing them. And I thank you for blessing your people. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise.
This year's event will begin with our Women's Day virtual retreat on Saturday, August the 8th, 2020, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And we'll conclude with Women's Day worship service on Sunday, August the 9th, 2020, at 10.45 a.m. For more information, please contact Sister Karshina Bain at 601-927-6074. Or Karshina Bay at gmail.com. COVID 19 precautionary measures and mandates during worship service. At St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church, your spiritual, physical, and emotional well being are amongst our highest of priorities. Out of an abundance of caution, in order to best serve, protect you, others, and ourselves. Please adhere to the instructions that are posted in and around the sanctuary and family life buildings and to those given by our staff and ministry personnel. Lastly, to all visitors and friends seated and or those who are tuning in for the first time, we at St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church sincerely welcome you here today with open arms and the love of God. And we ask that you come again. Join us live and or in person or log in on our Facebook live page or subscribe. Click and join us on YouTube. We would love for you to do so real soon. May the Lord continue to bless and keep each of you. Have a wonderful week. Oh, Lord.